My name is Debbie, Allen Gator Stitcher. Welcome to Floss Tube number 10. Today is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. This is a channel primarily about cross stitch, but a little bit about what I'm watching and reading and life thrown in. Just a really quick bit on what's going on in my life right now. I started an Invisalign treatment. Um, this basically means that I wear on my top and bottom um, for most of the day little plastic liners, um, which you change out every week or so, and they help uh, will help slowly straighten your teeth. I had a lot of crowding in my on my bottom teeth, and it was starting to cause discomfort. So the idea was to do this, and then it will over a year or so straighten out my teeth. I also had a tooth extraction, so that was not very fun. Um, my first one I've ever had, but now it's over. I'm hoping that when all is said and done, the discomfort I had will disappear. Um, as well as having straighter teeth, but really the thing is, you know, not to be having discomfort and then also that discomfort could turn to pain in the future if I don't deal with it now. Um, so enough about my teeth. I think most of you are here more to uh, learn about what I'm doing in the cross stitch world. I also would like to start out with a big thank you to Laura from Stitching by the Shore. She did a lovely shout out for me on her, her channel. So if you if you don't watch Laura, I really encourage you to go over there. She does a lot of variety of projects, some great stitching. She also really loves to try out different fabric dyers. She's got some beautiful colors that she uses and for all kinds of projects. And she's very creative how she combines what she is stitching with the color. She doesn't necessarily follow the suggested color, but she uses her own vision and or she uses her own artistic license and matches the fabric to the project and she has some gorgeous results. So if you aren't watching Laura, I encourage you to do so. I also want to do a shout out for the Under 1000 Subs Club. As many of you know on YouTube, if you have fewer than 1000 subscribers, you don't have access to some of the perks that you have with over 1000 subscribers. So I'm a member of that club um, and I never started these videos to have a lot of viewers. I just wanted to have an interaction with the cross stitch community. Um, I found whenever someone leaves me a comment on my videos, it's a great way just to interact with people who share the love of the same hobby. Um, but again, having more than a thousand subscribers, it allows you to do certain things um, that you can't do, but that I can't do right now. Um, so with that, um, I think I wanna shout out um, every floss tube someone else who's a member of that club. And the idea is to encourage you to go check out new videos. And if you like what you see, subscribe and help boost their membership as well, or their viewers as well. So the person I would like to shout out this week is Hannah Dowling. She, that, that's what her video is called. She does a lot of full coverage pieces. Um, she has, she does have a couple that are not full coverage. Um, she's doing, for example, a long dog sampler, but she has some beautiful stitching. Um, and so I encourage you to go watch her. She's on almost, I think, um, I think she does a weekly video and then occasionally she does stitch, stitch with me videos as well. She, um, she is also one of the administrators for Crystal Academy. And so she's, I really thank her for helping to create a really fun game that I've been able to participate in for the past year or so. So Hannah Dowling, go, go give her a look and see if you like what she has to, has to share. As many of you know who have watched my previous videos, I am involved in a lot of different um, cross-stitch challenge groups on Facebook and um, through other media. And so um, as I go through and show you what I've been working on, I'll make references to the games. If you don't know what I'm, uh, what I'm talking about, just drop me a question below um, and I'll be happy to answer it. Again, most of these are on Facebook with the exception of one of them. Um, and with that, I will say uh, Myth and Magic, which is really not on Facebook anymore. Um, I want to thank my teammates in that. Um, we just finished round 13. We had a lot of fun. My team um, came in second, um, and we thought we would push and try to, and I think there were seven or eight teams playing this time. We thought we would push to try and uh, see if we could beat the other team, um, but that would have involved some all-night stitching, and while I'm very fortunate that I probably can do that and not pay too much of a big price the next day because I don't have to go to work. Others, others that would probably impact them in other ways that would not be good for their jobs. Um, so we made a decision to wave the white flag. So congratulations to um, the winning team. 
So with that, I'm going to go ahead and show you a lot of my stitching. So the first one I'm going to show, um, I show this frequently. This is Heaven and Earth Design Little Cake Shop, um, artwork by Amy Stewart. This is, uh, I am doing the max, um, max color on this. So there's, I think, 246 colors in this pattern. And I am um, up in this part of the chart. So here's where I am now. Um, so you can see I've done you know, some of the wallpaper. This, I'm not sure if it is supposed to be a, uh, if it's a window or a poster on the wall. And then up here, up here is the uh, starting the molding on the ceiling. Um, so this, because of uh, Myth and Magic Wars, because we were, we needed to really push to try and get a lot of stitches in. This one right now, even though it's max color, I am able to work on it fairly quickly and not focus on, because I don't have to focus on color changes and many of the colors are close together. Um, so I can get, you know, like most of this is the same color down here. And because I do it on Pattern Keeper, it goes, real, it goes uh, much faster than if I was using a paper chart. Um, so over the weekend, I put in over 2,000 stitches on this um, from just, you know, because I was determined to help keep my team uh, in, in the game. Uh, so um, this has been a lot of fun to work on. I saw someone um, on, I think on the Heaven and Earth Designs Facebook group post what she had done and she was clearly a bottom starter. So she, her picture that she showed was all, maybe she was about a third, all this down here. And so it sort of gave me motivation to say, I really do want to pull this out. While this isn't the most interesting part, it is going relatively quickly. Um, but it just sort of watching her, you know, made me say, I want to pull this out and keep doing it more and more. This is by far, far my largest project. I am over a little bit over 2%. I hit that mark uh, this weekend. So I still have a long way to go. So that is Little Cake Shop by Heaven and Earth Design. The next one, another Heaven and Earth Design. This is Cats in the Toy Box, um, artwork by Leslie Ann Ivory. Um, so I am starting going across here. I did start this as originally as a, um, with on the paper copy. And so I was doing it page by page, more or less. I have since put it all on Pattern Keeper, but it just takes a little bit of, um, you yeah, know, I'm still trying to do it page by page until I get all the way across to the, to the far side. And then I will stop worrying about page breaks, but I sort of thought I want to get this first row done. So I pulled it out of the key snap. So here's where it is now. Um, so I'll just sort of pan across so you can get a good look at it on what I've done. So what I've done since the last time, um, basically I've got, I got in about 4,000 stitches uh, in May on this project, but uh, I showed you a little bit of progress from last time, but I definitely, what I finished was I finished this little doll here. Again, is it a kangaroo? Is it a piglet? Is it a bunny? I don't know. Um, it's cute nonetheless. So I finished this one, including you can see the collar in the sleeve of her dress. Um, and then this is, I did a lot of work on the koala bear. The, the page break is somewhere about here. So I finished this page here and I started moving over to this page. Um, so I've been making a lot of great progress on this. Um, so I'm really, really happy with this. I, I, it's my focus piece. So it's the piece I pull out most often to work on. And I am just loving working on it and I'm not getting tired of it. And in fact, what I do is I often, because it's my evening piece, I will work on it until I get to the target for the month. And then I'll put it away for, and so I, I put this away probably towards the end of last week and haven't worked on it since then. And when June comes around, I'll start pulling it out again. And it's, it, it, I really have anticipation uh, waiting for this project to come out again. Um, so I'm really enjoying working on that. And what I will say is this probably I have, I think, two full pages to go. And just like the, the last page is maybe a column. So, you know, it's not it is not anywhere close to being a full page. So I think the next time I put the Q-snap on, and it's 11 by 11 Q-snap, it'll be able to get all the way across and um, so that I don't have to move the Q-snap in order to finish what I need to in order to get that whole, the first top row pages done. So I'm really excited about that. 
The next thing I worked on was one of my whip go pieces. Um, this is Mystic Stitch Tug of War. This was something I started in, started in Mania last year. I am in this part here, which as you can imagine, is a little background. So it's something because it's not the most exciting part of the pattern to stitch. It's not something that I turn to frequently. Um, but because it was my whip go piece, I did pull it out and I put in about a thousand stitches. So just filling in here. Um, this basically is the page break that comes down here. I extended the black over so that I wouldn't um, have a break in the middle of all the black and have that sort of page line. That this is where that clothes pin goes. Um, so I'm enjoying this. I have about 100 stitches left um, to meet my whip go goal of 1,000 stitches. And um, I probably will use it for magical stitches. We have to stitch, I think, um, one of the prompts is 100 stitches in, I think, green, blue, or red. And so there's greens and blues here. I can, you know, two or three lengths of, of floss, and that will help me meet my whip go goal, meet that prompt. And then I will, I will probably keep it on the cue snap. Again, I have always have a desire to, you know, when I feel like I'm getting close to a page finish to continue it. There probably is a lot more here to do than I'm really counting on, but there's, a, you can see a couple dots up there where there are stitches that are the only color on those pages on that on this page but I think once you get away from that I think I have um, only two or three colors that are left to do down here the problem is it's black and navy blue so it's very similar um, but I think it, it it's not again and because this is background if I miscount and I put a black stitch where a navy blue stitch should go um, it, it's the overall effect we're trying for, um, not individual stitches when you're talking about the background. It's not going to affect the overall piece. So I'm really enjoying this. Um, or I will really enjoy this project once I sort of get down into the quilts. But for now, it's easy stitching and it's something I can do when I'm concentrating on other things. The next thing I'm working on is A Year at Hawk Run Hollow by Carrie Child Samplings. I think many of you are familiar with this pattern. Um, I was working on the April block, but I'm going down as opposed to across. And my goal for this month was to finish the April block. Um, I, I and I have in the magazine monthly cross stitch challenge group on Facebook. Um, there is a monthly magazine topic that you pick a pattern, and then you also have an acrostic if you want to do it. The acrostic doesn't have to be for magazines. And the word this month was Daisy. And so why um, a year at Hawk Run Hollow? And before I had sort of been putting down half-hearted goals um, to meet it, and they often overlapped with my whip go goals, but I decided I wanted to challenge myself a little bit more if all I'm doing is just trying to complete the acrostic and just overlapping with my other goals, then what am I really accomplishing? So I made a decision that um, I was gonna push myself. And so I said on this one, it was a block finish. So I met my goal. Sorry, I want to take this out a little bit. Um, so there is the April block. I basically, um, the house, I had to finish it, but it was close to being done. I had to finish the fence and the tree and then all of the animals at the bottom and most of the yellow and green grass. So um, I really am enjoying this pattern. Um, this is done on 36 count Heartland by Picture This Plus. It is, I am doing two over two on this one. So there's the January block. I know um, I showed this before, but I'll show it again. And there's where I am now. So when I pick this up again, I'll be moving on to the July block. Um, and I probably will pick it up in June as well because all of the Hawk Run Hollow pieces are really great for when you're trying to, uh, to meet a prompt in one of the challenge groups. Often, because there's such a variety, often you can do it with that piece. And I am using the DMC threads for that and not the needlepoint silks um, that it was originally charted for. Um, also with the Magazine Monthly Challenge, so the theme this month was flowers for May flowers. And so this is from an old issue of Cross Stitch and Country Crafts. Um, and I'm doing In the Garden, which as you can tell has a lot of flowers. Um, this is a chart that I originally had started for the, uh, in preparation for the March prompt. Um, which was blue um, because this is on blue fabric 
Um, but uh, rather than starting a new project each month, I decided that I was going to try and build on what I've already done. Um, one, because of no new starts. I, um, I'm still meeting the goal. I, I used my freebie in that group, but I also, um, um, also in preparation for this year, started um, a number of charts for the magazine monthly challenge. But I, but I, I said, how many do I need, magazine pieces do I need going at the same time? So I decided that I would try and double up the prompts. The goal is to stitch things that we have in magazines that we keep buying and then don't look at again. Um, and so I think it was a really lovely idea uh, for the people who created that group to sort of encourage us to, to stitch things from our magazines. So here's where I am now. Um, so basically, um, I even though I started over here on the side, these are some flowers, I then sort of jumped over and started working on um, I, I so I already have had like the flowers done and a little bit of this stuff here and a little bit of this pole here so what I did this month was I I really wanted to finish this entire birdhouse entirely also got this butterfly stitched and then um, had worked started working on this little birdhouse here um, and I put in more than I originally, I, I always have wanted to um, finish this birdhouse here and then the butterfly because this, this is the top of the pattern. Um, but then I continued a little bit on this one because I use this for, um, for magical stitches. One week we had to stitch something with the garden and obviously in the garden met that prompt. This is done on a 28 count Lakeside Linen Aqua Mist. I absolutely love this color. Um, I just love the way some of these colors are really popping off of it. Um, it goes really well. So even that, that the picture is actually done on a much darker linen, I think this sort of lighter aqua color is working out really well also. The next one that I worked on was, um, this is Artisy, the Green Dancer, based on artwork from Edgar Degas. Um, so I had... I don't know, a month or two ago, I thought I was very close to finishing this third page here. Um, but I put in, I think, 500 stitches on this over the weekend, and I still haven't finished page three. Um, if I get up close, you can see where some of the holes are here. Um, obviously, it's a lot of confetti stitching at this point, and it's just slow going. And when I have thread on my needle, I like to finish it before I switch colors. So even if there's only, say, two or three stitches of here I will go down or somewhere over here um, just so that I can rather than having to rethread my needle all the time so even though I put in 500 stitches my guess is fewer than half of them actually were in this area and they just sort of got pulled in um, pulled in somewhere else I'm fine with that it means that when I get to those pages there's fewer stitches that I need to do um, when I get to those pages a stitch is a stitch no matter where it is on the project Unfortunately, this one, I only have a hard copy of the pattern, so that also slows me down a little bit as well. Um, but I do love it. Obviously, I love this painting, which is why I'm stitching it. Um, and just sort of love seeing these figures um, come to life. Um, and you can see here, this is the arm of one of the dancers that is actually wearing green. Um, and this is, this is her tutu here. So I'm really enjoying um, doing this one as well don't right now have any uh, specific prompts I will use it for in June, but I will um, continue to um, see if I can at least get a page finish here sooner rather than later. Um, and once I get this page finished, I will be more than 25% done with this project. So it, it's, not, it's not a huge full coverage. The next one I worked on um, is Heaven and Earth Designs, um, Jane Bannister. Um, so this is uh, what it is, and I think like a lot of people who choose a stitches pattern, I picked it because of those giant cats. I think that they are uh, sort of uh, funny and cute to look at. I'm also using this for No New Starts has a um, monthly prompt every month that you can choose to participate in or not, and they do it by the zodiac signs. So um, this month or this period is Gemini, which are the twins. 
and they're very liberal on what is you know what is a twin you can't you, they say if you have two animals that sort of look the same and so i said that these two cats clearly were litter mates um, which makes them twins um, so um, that's why i uh, picked this one i am i am using the called for um, swaddleshay um, um, avera swall swaddleshay silks for this and i am doing it one over two and this is 32 count lakeside linen um, Lakeside Linen Maritime White. So here's where I am. I am basically still working on the border. I did uh, jump down and there's a little flower pot here. Just start that a little bit. Um, and part of the reason why I jumped down again was that somewhere over here, there were four or five stitches of this color. And I just wanted to uh, finish off the thread that I had in the needle. Um, so um, someone else I saw, I corresponded with on Instagram was working on this a few months ago. She was she has now finished it. And I commented to her that I was working and she's like, oh, have fun with the border. It's really thick and no joke. And it is, as you can see from the pattern, it is quite a substantial border, um, but I will, um, it's really pretty. And yes, while there is some repetition, it's not, uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's enough that by the time you finish one part of the border and you, move on you know there's a couple of other motifs and by the time you get back to what can, can be considered repetitive you've already forgotten what you have done i also don't i'm not someone who stitches the whole border and then fills in the middle um to me i i sort of stitch as i have it in the q-snap so you know i'll do this part then move the q-snap and move over and do it that way and part of the reason why i do that is that if i do make a mistake in the border um i can fudge it later um, you all know, know that I need to fudge it. I'm not going to all of a sudden come over and find out that I'm two stitches over. Um, that's just the way I choose to do it. I know there are some people who like to do the borders first because once that's done, they can then focus on the more interesting part in the middle. Um, but that's the way I choose to do it. And so I'm having a lot of fun with that. I also use that for letters of the month. Um, this month we were doing um, I and J. And so obviously J for Jane Bannister. And so I... My personal goal was 500 stitches. I probably got in eight or 900 stitches this month on that one. And then the last piece that I worked on that I'm going to show you is uh, my oldest project. This is Artisee's uh, Old World Map. Um, so I'm sort of up here. And usually I try and work on this every day with, um, with the Myth and Magic where um, where you can stack your stitches, so it makes it harder for the mods. I tended not, I tended rather than working on this for a little bit every day, I tended to do it a little bit more chunks of time um, just to make it easier on everyone. So here's where I am now. I am, um, so I filled in a little bit here. I also started filling in a little bit here. Because I had done this on the diagonal, that's why it's sort of, you know, the diagonal was probably here. I started working over this way, but then especially as I got down here, there were just a few stitches that I needed to do. So I would do that and then pull it over. Um, so uh, just like what I didn't want to do is, you know, even though I'm using Pattern Keeper, you know, out of sight, out of mind, I didn't want to end up with a situation where I didn't even realize that there was a stitch I needed to do over here because I'm looking at the pattern here on Pattern Keeper. Um, but what I think is finally starting to come out, you can, even though these are a lot of confetti, this is, you can sort of see the arc of it now, um, part of one of the uh, globes is finally starting to come out. So I'm really excited about that. I'm getting away from some of the decorative figures on the side. Um, so really enjoying this. And now that Myth and Magic Wars is over, at least for a couple of weeks, I am um, looking forward to getting back and stitching this a little bit every day. It's a great way to jumpstart what I'm doing every day. So that's all I have to show you of what I have stitched. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of my plans for the next few weeks or so. Um, the WIPGO numbers have not been called yet. They'll be called, I think, on Thursday. So obviously I'll work on those projects once I know what those are. Um, but I am for the Magazine Monthly Challenge. Um, the theme is summer. Um, and again, I wanted to pull out a project that I have already started rather than something that I know I will have to, um, you know, rather than having have to start something new. So I'm pulling out one that I actually started in Mania last year 
called um, Patriotic Patchwork, and it's uh, this sort of uh, bell pole America. And when I originally started this, I thought it would be great um, because I was working in an embassy and thought it would be something nice to put in my office that um, represented, you know, obviously I was represent representing the United States, um, but also a way of bringing in my personal hobby into the office. I have decided since I started this to retire, um, but I still uh, like this and would like to finish it, um, at, you know, finish it and display it in my home somehow. How I will finish it, whether it will be a bell pull or something else, I haven't decided. Um, but I really haven't done this much since Mania because May last year was when I decided to retire, um, even though I didn't retire until later in the year. And so I just had other things I was focusing on. So um, I did get a little bit of work in this last month, um, but basically this is my piece for June. And my goal will be to get it at, um, to get uh, the A-M-E done, um, which even though that's three sevenths of the letters, the eye is skinny, so we can pretend like, you know, <laughs> there's six and a half letters. Um, so anyhow, that's where I am. The A is basically done. I think I'm missing a few stitches and then it needs back stitching. And then obviously these are the initial stitches for M. Uh, another project that I plan to work on over the next couple of weeks, uh, many of you know this, Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. Um, and for No New Starts, um, they, every two weeks they have they call a stitch along and they make it clear it's a stitch along not a start along um, but um, if it's your birthday within those two weeks you can say here's what I want for my stitch along and uh, and so we pull out a project so the, one of the people for this period had said I want to um, uh, do blackbird design so that's why I'll pull this out and we'll work on it um, so I have this is where I am now, I, uh, and so I'm hoping that I can get at least the third flower uh, done over here. One thing that my only hesitancy is that I'm not 100% sure that I have all the colors for that flower. Um, again, I, I started kidding this up last year during the pandemic, and while I did go back for the colors I was missing and go buy them, I think the second or third pass when I went to go buy them, they still didn't have the color. Um, so hopefully things are getting a little bit better as more and more people are getting vaccinated and suppliers have a better access to the threads and the dyes and, and the labor force they need to come and actually um, dye the colors. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to, uh, to find what I hope. I'm hoping that we all will be able to have easier access to the things that we are looking for. Um, so, but this, this side, you know, I'm not going to put a huge amount of stitches in this, but I am looking forward to getting back to this. It's been a really fun stitch so far, and I just love the details as they're coming out. I love these two little birds that popped up there, for example, um, and just these little motifs, which are, they have uh, the satin stitch in the middle of them. Uh, this flower has an eyelet. I'm not entirely sure what, what um, stitches are in the next flower, but I'm looking forward to doing it. And then my last project that I know I'm going to be working over, working on in the next week or so, um, this is Portrait of Veronica by Mirabilia. Um, and I am using this for Crystal, no, sorry, not for Crystal Academy, for Magical Stitches. And uh, we have, one of the prompts is we have to find something that has objects that we would use as a currency, but it can't actually be a currency. So, you know, we've got a picture of gold coins. Those are a currency. So that doesn't count. Um, and so what I'm saying is that she's wearing, she's got um, you know, here in her headpiece and then she's got a necklace. Those are um, jewels and jewels are often used as currency. So um, I will continue to work on her skin um, while most of this project is two over two on a 32 count, um, I think it's Star Sapphire by, by Witch Out. Um, I am doing her skin at one over one, and it just takes me a long time. Um, so I'm hoping just, you know, little by little, uh, punching through what I need to get done for this. Um, but again, I really, I, I really do love the pattern and just, I need to push until I get her skin done. And then I think the rest of it will feel like it's going much more quickly. So, so that is all I have for my plans. Um, obviously, as I said, when Whipco gets called 
those numbers are called, I will incorporate those into what I am doing as well. So now moving on a little bit to haul, I don't have too much to show. Uh, the first is the fabric of the month. Um, this is from Fortnite Fabrics. Um, I am in the gray club with 32 count um, even weave. This is it's called N Dragon. I cannot remember what the N stands for. Um, they had it in the email, but they didn't write it on the card. And here's the um, piece of fabric. It's one of the darker grays that they have done. It's obviously not that dark. It's not like a charcoal. It's more about I would consider it a true gray. Um, and the modeling is actually showing up much more um, in the video than it actually is. I mean, it is modeled, um, but the, the areas that are showing up white there are they're much more of a, a gray that matches this. So another lovely color um, for Fortnite Fabrics. So thank you, Christian and Derek, um, for, uh, for having that club. Um, I am supposed to get two other uh, Fabric of the Months that are supposed to come um, in the mail this week. I was hoping I would get them yesterday, but someone thought it would be fun to park their scooter in front of our mailbox. Um, and on my street, we have one of those like big mailboxes that maybe 20 houses share that, that mailbox. And we don't have a lot, we have quite a bit of street parking. It's not, you know, we're not, it's, this is, I live in suburbs. I do not live in a big city. Um, so really parking on our street is not a problem, but this guy with the scooter thought parking right in front of the mailbox would be fine. And the mailman came by and refused, you know, basically would have to lean over the scooter to put things in the box and just drove on by. So hopefully the scooter is gone. Hopefully the person who's driving it will not come back and park there again. And my fabrics will come hopefully uh, this month. So, or sorry, this week, if not today, because they both, all, both of the other fabrics went out for shipping at the end of last week. Um, I did purchase uh, this, um, uh, this it is called uh, Trans Pride Tapestry. Um, I think if you watch a lot of floss tube, you know that um, this is a chart that was um, the original artwork, I believe, is uh, someone named Kari Nakan. Um, the name looks Norwegian to me, so that's how I'm going to pronounce it. My apologies to you, Kari, if that is not the way you say your name. Um, but and then it was charted by um, D20, um, D D E 20. Um, and so basically, um, this is done in support of trans uh, for trans pride for pride month and i don't know exactly until when but if you purchase this chart um, i think through the end of june but i could be wrong about that that um, that they will make a donation to to uh, several or to several organizations um, that support uh, pride month and there is a, a stitch along that is starting next month um, I will not be participating in that stitch along because I'm doing no new starts, but I really wanted to get this chart. Um, I think it's a really cute pattern and it's one of those that, you know, you can have a lot of fun with fabrics, um, just matching the colors and the colors and all of this are really pretty. Um, so when I do start this, hopefully either at the end of this year or sometime next year, um, I will, you know, it will still continue to bring me pleasure and I'm always very happy to support, um, trans artists and, and designers and other people um, who are members of our cross-stitch community um, who, whose voices don't often get heard. So that is all I have for my cross-stitching content. A little bit about what I am reading and, and watching. So I finished uh, recently a book called The Paris Secret by Natasha Lester. I, it's another historical fiction and it's about a, um, a it's Basically, it's about two or three women, but basically it's about women who who served in during World War II, either supporting, um, I'm gonna get the acronyms wrong, but basically were pilots during World War II in the United Kingdom. Um, obviously they were not combat pilots, but they would have to um, ferry the planes um, from different bases, um, either from, because they, that's where they, they were brought out of production they needed to be delivered or if they needed to be taken from one base to another for maintenance or something. And so it, and it was quite dangerous work because they weren't allowed to use radar and if the planes were damaged, they're flying damaged planes. And so um, 
it is somewhat about that, but more about the role, you know, the, it, the disrespect that those women received because the work they were doing was not considered as important as what um, what the men the, the male pilots were doing, including some men who were just ferrying planes around from one base to another. Um, they were they had to not only pass the same flight tests that the men did, but they often had to pass harder tests to fly the same aircraft. Um, and then it's also about women who served, um, and they call it the SOE, Special Operations, um, basically uh, women who served as spies uh, in France. Um, and while some of them are French, others were uh, British women who were able to pass themselves off as, off, off as French. Um, and so it's there are two sisters as well as uh, a third woman who um, is who they meet her because um, she is working with the SOE, and it's just it, it very very well it describes very well sort of the trials and tribulations they had to go through. Um, it also flashes most of the novels technically a flashback because there is a woman who is the granddaughter of one of these women but she has no idea that her grandmother had done all of this. And of course there's, you know, the love story of one of the women who, who had a child, who, you know, as a child, you know, made friends with someone who, you know, their families, whatever, he moves, he basically moves away. Their families don't work. His family doesn't want them to be with her. So they stop correspondence and in the way of typical romances, they end up back together or at least, coming into each other's lives again. So um, that part of the story was probably not my favorite part um, and not in, you know, to me, the historical fiction was the much more interesting part of the story than the love story. Um, and the one fact that I discovered that even my husband, who is a, a big history buff, especially for uh, like World War II, didn't know, um, but that Catherine Dior, who is the sister of Christian Dior, actually served as a spy in the French resistance during World War II and ended up at the Ravensbrück concentration camp. I had no idea about that. Um, and you know, the, the, the author of the novel tried to make it clear that a lot of these women, once the war was over, um, did not want to tout their accomplishments, that it was so, they, what they did they thought was important, but it caused them so much trauma that it was something that they wanted to move on with their lives. Um, and so, um, but it was just still, and, and, but the story of Catherine Dior is actually what inspired the author to, to tell the story and she told it very well. So if you're looking for historical fiction, World War II, I highly recommend The Paris Secret by Natasha Lester. And then what I'm watching, it's summer, there's not a lot of new programs on. So my husband and I um, have been binge watching some old programs that we never saw before. So we're finishing up Parenthood. Um, so obviously I knew the movie from many, many years ago, and I knew they had made a TV show, but never watched it. But we, we like Peter Krauss and Lauren Graham. And so we decided, hey, let's, let's watch this. And we've really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, great, uh, great watching the family dynamics, um, some of which you can relate to, some of which you can't. But I think one of the things that makes it, that we enjoy about it as a show, is that it does provoke discussion between us. Because you see, you know, that, something happens between siblings or parent-child or within a marriage, but you get both sides of it. So sort of, while no one is ever 100% right and someone 100% wrong, you can lean one way or the other and it just sort of leads us to have interesting discussions. So um, we, we got it on one of our streaming services and we watched it um, and we're thoroughly enjoying it. I would say the only downside we have to it is that Occasionally there are storylines that they just, they, they pick it up and then they drop it. But in real life, you wouldn't drop it. So for example, in the first year, um, which I think this came out in like 2008 or 2009, as you know, um, a lot of economic difficulties throughout the world. And so the sort of family patriarch has, he's made a very poor real estate investment. And it's the kind of thing that he thinks will, you know, it could you know, have a huge impact on their retirement savings. And he is technically retired. Um, and so they make a big deal of it for a few episodes and all of a sudden it's just washed away. 
and you never hear about it again. And so I don't know if the writers just thought this isn't an interesting storyline or maybe they wrote about it and it just got ended up on the editing floor, who knows. Um, but there are occasional storylines like that that just sort of disappear and they don't try to explain what happened, um, especially as they shift between seasons. But other than that, we are thoroughly enjoying it. So Parenthood, um, which I guess he ended in 2014, so that shows how old it is and how behind I am on uh, American television. Um, but with that, that's all I have to share with you today. Um, if you enjoyed this video, um, please subscribe if you haven't. Feel free to leave me a comment. I love hearing from all of you and interacting with you. Until the next time, happy stitching, everyone.